What's up, freak bitches, wherever you may be, however you may be watching, thank you for giving me just a few minutes of your time. Today on this show, I want to talk about Terminator Dark Fate. I finally got a chance to go see the movie over the weekend, and I gotta admit, it's not half bad. We'll, uh, we'll start with going over the plot. So, this future war with Skynet was averted because of the events of Terminator 1 and Terminator 2. But, like stupid humans that we are, we created yet another threat. This time it's called Legion. Uh, Legion eventually pulls all the same shit that Skynet does and wipes out most of the human race. Uh, then they follow Skynet's lead by sending back this half-skeleton, half-liquid metal assassin called the Rev-9 to eliminate the one that will regroup the humans and form the Resistance, named Danny Ramos. No, not John Connor. I'll get to that in just a second. And of course the good guys send back a protector named Grace to protect this girl, Danny. Grace is some kind of a human cyborg, not unlike, uh... Sam Worthington's ter character in Terminator Salvation, similar to that, just kind of a bit of a different design. Now, during their first scrape with the Rev-9, Grace and Danny get some help from an unexpected person, and this is where Sarah Connor enters the picture. Now, while they're recovering from that encounter, Sarah and Grace have a little heart-to-heart -heart conversation that gives a lot of backstory about how we got to this point in this particular movie. Grace was enhanced after suffering some mortal wounds while battling killer robots in the future, and Sarah was laying low with John when a T-800 which is Arnie, walks up and gives him a shotgun blast to the chest and kills him. Sarah explains that sometime after John's death, she starts getting these encrypted text messages ending with the words, For John, from an unknown person telling her where and when Terminators will appear, and she becomes a Terminator hunter and goes hunting Terminators and killing them as they pop back from the future. So they decide to seek out who's sending these messages, and to everyone, or really no one's surprise, it ends up being Arnold Schwarzenegger's T-800, who is now known throughout the movie is Carl, which is absolutely stupid. And it turns out he is the same Terminator that killed John years earlier in this flashback. So the group makes a plan to ambush and destroy this Rev-9 Terminator. And in order to do so, they seek out a military-grade EMP from an acquaintance of Sarah that she gets her weapons from. The Rev-9, of course, catches up with them, forces them to forcing them to steal a C-5 Galaxy to escape. That's when you get this whole plane crashing into the plane thing that you see in the trailers. And as a result of this confrontation, the EMP is destroyed. A wounded and jacked up, the group makes their last stand at a power plant. During the ensuing battle, Carl and Grace force the Rev-9 into a spinning turbine, and they pretty much destroy the liquid part of it, but there's still the skeletal, skeletal part of it left. Uh, and it causes this big explosion, which incapacitates most of the group and mortally wounds Grace. Before dying, Grace tells Danny to use the power source in her chest to destroy the Rev-9's damaged exoskeleton. I'm sorry, endoskeleton. Internal skeleton. Endoskeleton. Uh, the Rev-9 gets the upper hand, but Carl manages to pop up at the last second, just like the heroes always do in the movie, and restrains it, allowing Danny to stab this power supply into the Rev-9. The Rev-9 is still fighting with the Terminator, the good Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger drabs him over the ledge of this deep pit where they were building this other uh, turbine for the for the hydroelectricity. And right before the whole thing explodes and destroys them both, he says he looks at Sarah and says, for John. And then, big moment, yada, yada, yada. And the final scene of the movie shows Sarah and Danny watching a very young Grace from afar while Danny vows not to let her die again. Well, let me go into some of the positives about the movie. They, they did start a whole new story, and there's going to be a little bit more on that later. Uh, we find out that Skynet was defeated and the events of Terminator 1 and 2 were meaningful, but at the same time, they give us this kind of new path to go down. To me, this is what they were trying to do with Terminator Genesis, but failed really, really badly at. I thought Terminator Genesis was a great concept. The execution wasn't fantastic. Uh, another positive I really liked was it was a good mix of the old and the new. You get this nostalgic thing with having Linda Hamilton come back and play Sarah and having Arnold Schwarzenegger come back for what I assume is one last go-around as the T-800, but you never know. If, this, if they decide to make another movie, Arnold's probably going to be a part of it. I don't know how you can have a Terminator movie without having Arnold involved somehow. Uh, it did give us a new path. It was a good mix of the old and the new. When you go back to an old IP like this, you have to give us this balance of nostalgia and a, a future, I, an idea of what's coming in the future. And they did that pretty well. You know, most of the movies that try to go back to find an old, to an old IP to give us new product, they have to have this passing of the torch moment, uh, not unlike the conversation between the two Spocks and J.J. Abrams' Star Trek movie. That was a moment that really gave 
this reboot a lot of credibility and a lot of it let the fans know that they are taking this seriously. So the long time fans all the way back to the original series of the sixties, even the more, even the younger fans will know that this is going to be a good thing and it's cool. And I think this movie, while it didn't really have one specific scene that was like that, it was a good enough balance of the two that moving forward, you can feel comfortable at least about the story. Uh, the other positive I had was the casting was fucking amazing. Mackenzie Davis is the good Terminator Grace was outstanding. Uh, Natalia Reyes, Reyes, who plays uh, Danny Ramos, I think she's really cool. She's gorgeous, obviously. She she played the she she is kind of an amalgamation of Sarah Connor and John Connor all at the same time. She's this young person who leads the resistance late, you know, later on down this timeline. But she is also kind of this young, innocent, she's just trying to get through life, kind of the way Sarah was in the very first Terminator movie back in the 80s. So they really did take some of the really cool stuff about both those characters and kind of put it together in this one character of Danny. Uh, and then obviously having Linda Hamilton back as Sarah Connor was a huge, huge boost. She is every bit as badass in this as she has been in prior movies. She definitely was something they had to have to make this movie work. Arnold Schwarzenegger coming back as the T-800 was fantastic. Uh, I, I refuse to call him Carl. I know most everybody refers to him as Carl later in the movie. I'm just not going to call him Carl. He's a Terminator. But they did give it a... They gave it the proper connective tissue to the first two Terminator movies. Now, one of the negatives that I have about this is the... The new story is a bit of a misnomer. It really is the same story as the original Terminator movie just different people in different roles. Uh, basically, Danny is now, like I said, she he is the John Connor, Sarah Connor, where Grace kind of comes along and plays Kyle Reese without having to give birth to the future leader of the Resistance. Resistance. Um, the other knock I had on it is the John Connor cameo was kind of bullshit. There was a little bit made about how Eddie Furlong was going to be making a appearance in this movie. They said they never they never committed to him being full fledged in the movie, being on set, playing a big part. But his his appearance in the movie it looked like basically some cutting room shit from Terminator Two, like something that they had shot to potentially use in Terminator Two and never did, and then just kind of threw it in here somewhere to kind of explain where he went. Now, I know that's not what it was. I know they actually shot the scene. They used the facial replacement stuff and the de-aging de stuff to make Sarah look like the Sarah that we saw in Terminator 2 and to make Edward Furlong look like the you know 13-year-old Edward Furlong that we saw in Terminator 2. But the scene didn't work for me at all. I mean, I don't mind his character dying because I think that's a great way to kind of push this down a new path. But if you were going to do that, it would have been so much better, in my opinion, to have something like John comes in with Sarah. We find out that they've both been fighting Terminators. And then somewhere early on in this battle against Rev-9, John dies in battle. That would have been a much better much better way to have him in there, even just for a few minutes. So it was kind of, it was kind of disappointing for me in a lot of ways. You know, many people are calling this movie a bust. Uh, look, the box office hasn't been good for a Terminator film anyway. Uh, box Office Mojo, as of yesterday, I think, the film has pulled in $125 million and a reported budget of about $195 million. Now, it's still got a few weeks ahead of it, and it's going to make a few bucks. I think word of mouth is going to carry this a bit because the critics and audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is actually pretty good. The critic score is a 71% and the audience score is a 84%. So hopefully word of mouth is going to drive this thing. Hopefully the people that were kind of put off by the fact that they were making Terminator 19 or whatever the hell number Terminator movie this is, are going to hear that the movie's pretty good, and they're going to go ahead and run out to see it. And then maybe they're going to run out and see it one more time and help give it a little bit of a little bit of a boost towards the end, because it's a good movie, and I may go back and see it again. But, uh, but the one thing that kind of works against it is you've got a couple of big films like Doctor Sleep that comes out in a couple weeks, and Ford v. Ferrari comes out, and that's a potential Oscar nominee. And both those movies are going to jump in there, and they're going to take a lot of box office away from pretty much every other movie. And I think that's going to hurt the the longevity of Dark Fate in the theaters. Uh, as as far as as far as what the future of the franchise is now, who knows? 
Uh, the reports are that the movie is going to lose a projected $100 million for the studio, and that's not good news when you've planned two movies after this. So the easy answer to the question of is this film a bust is probably yes, despite the fact that you're getting good reviews from both critics and audience members on sites like Rotten Tomato. So who knows? Hopefully hopefully they'll they'll make enough money at this or at least break even and, and say look the fans obviously liked it maybe if we make a sequel we'll do some good money let's just make sure we rein the budget in a little bit so that we're not blowing ourselves up and maybe we'll see another movie who knows uh my overall thoughts it's by far the best terminator film since terminator 2. uh that's not saying a whole lot because every terminator movie since then has been pretty bad i kind of like the ending of terminator 3. i think it was a pretty fitting ending but the reality is the, the other Terminator movies were just bad. I mean, they were really good concepts. I liked the concept of Terminator Genesis. I liked the concept of Terminator Salvation. Execution wasn't there. And I think that if you have James Cameron moving forward, you can get better product moving forward, as long as he's involved. If I have to give this a star score, I would give it three and a half out of five stars. There were some things that bothered me. Uh... You know, like I said, the, the whole John Connor cameo was just crap. Uh, action sequences were fantastic. The casting was great. I really think you guys should go see it. So, you know, go go spread the word. Let people who are on the fence know that this movie is actually worth a watch. If you want to go, go to a matinee showing so you can see it for half price. I mean, most places have matinee showings that are, you know, six, eight bucks to get into. If you can go during the day. I know a lot of people work during the day. But, yeah, go check this movie out. It's really not bad. And uh, that's all I've got to say about it. So... Do all the like, share, and subscribe stuff like every other asshole YouTuber says, and I'll catch you guys later.